for the the patrons at River Salute. What was it that you wanted us to know? Well, thank you very much. First of all, um, when I'm in Jamaica, I like to represent not only for Uganda, but for Africa. And indeed, I would like to mention not only the bad things about Africa, but also the good things. And like I said, much as Africa is blessed, Africa is the future. Africa is full of intelligent young men and women who are uh, bursting with hope, you know, and abilities. I also mentioned that Africa is lagging behind because of bad or poor leadership. And uh, in that case, Uganda in particular, where I come from, has been ruled by the same leader in a dictatorship for 33 years today. And the more than four, 40 million people are living in misery, in extreme poverty, where one family is ruling over and misusing the natural resources of the greatly endowed country. So because that is how it is, I try to use music to make sure that I continue the journey that has started so many years ago by people so many miles away from home to open the minds of the people. And that is what I do through my music. I know that we can do it. I know that when we stand uh, um, strong, we can achieve that. As an artist, initially, I was not very concerned about the politics because, uh, I mean, even the people I've been following, um, the people like Cizla, like Anthony B, like Tony Rebo, all my inspirations, none of them went to politics. And as a matter of fact, many of them used to be seemingly despised politics. So I was comfortable as an artist knowing that for as long as I sing about the injustices like my mentors do, that would be okay. Until I realized that, man, we must do more than just talking about things. We must get involved. I mean, when I was growing up, our teachers and parents were telling us that we are the leaders of the future. And man, when I look at myself now, my first son is growing up, and I realize that if there's any future, then that future is today. And uh, looking on the, in, in all the books that uh, we follow as laws, they provide that power is within the people. So I realized that besides calling upon young men to have fun, it's important to call upon them to get practically involved in how their country is being governed. And that is how I end in politics. That is how I end up, you know, wanting my voice to be counted. that really attracted me to the personality Bobby Wine. So you, you're up against quite a force in Uganda, and, and this force is, it, it, it can be very um, valid. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, know, I know that in Uganda, for anybody to mention anything against President Museveni, he will be going against the Bank of Uganda. He will be going against Uganda for this UB. Oh, 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 going against Uganda people's defense forces and all that. I mean, <clears throat> I've seen so many freedom fighters beaten, jailed, and others killed. I knew. And indeed, that's the kind of fear that has had been holding me back many times. But like I said before, um, I was comfortable until I realized that it was just an illusion. Nobody was free from the injustice. And besides just that, I mean... Every time one goes back to the ghetto, you look at the young men and women who I grew up with and are still languishing in poverty. So I cannot just keep um, mum about it. So yeah, all that happened um, indeed ever since I took um, the decision to um, speak uh, uh, to speak truth to power. I faced the first time um, um, bombs were thrown to my house and my son was always scared. Well, was almost killed and uh, from that we've been facing uh, um, arrests uh, for example the other year the military stormed the parliament and arrest and you know dragged all the members of parliament from the floor of parliament beating them um, detaining us but later releasing us with no charge but uh, the most recent was uh, when I was in Arua on a campaign, a campaign trail when the 
military section called the Special Forces Guard. And these are the ones that are charged uh, with guarding the president and are commanded by the president's son. They attacked uh, where I was. They shot my driver dead. They thought they were shooting at me because my driver was sitting exactly where I had been sitting a few minutes earlier. They shot my driver dead. They um, broke into the hotel where I was, arrested me, beat me, and almost killed me. And then, you know, um, locked me up in military detention. The following day, they presented two machine guns. And uh, the government police spokesperson said that those machine guns were found in my room. But because there was so much international pressure, I mean, the government shamelessly dropped their charges. And they've never talked about the guns again, you know. And not only that, many of my friends have been um, extrajudicially killed. Um, people are executed. People are shot down. The too much intimidation, you know. But the only thing that keeps me going is the fact that many other revolutionaries have gone through such intimidation. And they have won. Our forefathers had to endure much, much more than we are enduring. So for as long as I know that there's, um, there's this hope for justice, this hope for truth, this hope for liberation, I just keep going on. Wow, that's wonderful. You talk about international pressure coming to bear on the president. Let me ask you about the support that you get from the rank and file, from the grassroots people of your own country. Because my readings tell me that you are extremely popular amongst the, the poor, amongst those who are marginalized and oppressed. Let's talk about that. Well, I wouldn't say it is me who is popular. No, it is only the idea that I represent. I can tell you, Mama, that today if I stopped thinking or speaking the way I speak, that support would go to any other ordinary ghetto youth. It's just because there are so many people that feel represented when I speak. When I speak, I speak for the millions of people that are like me, but I've never been taken serious enough. I've been singing about these issues for a very long time, but, you know, the government uh, rejected it. But now when I took a stand in parliament and started speaking about the same things, that's when I got the support and following. Yes, the ideas that I stand for, are very popular. The ideas that I stand for are very strong. I have not mentioned here, but it's a fact that over 85% of the Ugandan population is younger than me, is under the age of 35. So when I speak, all these ghetto youth, they listen, they understand, and they feel the possibilities. And when I tell them what we can achieve as a nation, especially if we put our minds and hearts together, they understand. So it's not about me, it's about that energy that comes in in a perfect timing. Very well said. I love that you really speak like a true revolutionary. And I believe you because the same energy of which you speak, we felt. I mean, I am so honored to just have you here because after Sunday night, I called anybody who would listen to talk about the Africans who were on stage and particularly Bobby Wine because of the revolution that you brought on stage. Let's talk about on stage at Rebel Salute now. Um, amazing, amazing. You know, even the way you deliver, it is very clear to me that you have been really looking at some of these Jamaican artists because... <laughs> We used to buy in the times of cassettes as young boys of 13, 14, and 15 years growing up, we used to buy one Buju Banton cassette album and each one of us could, would keep it for a day. Mm -hmm. But because I always contributed the biggest number, I'll keep it for three days. <laughs> <laughs> but listening to a Buju Banton album or a Capleton album or even a Bob Marley album was like going through having a course, you know. So. Having it, it was like a university course. Okay, of course. Yeah, okay. uh, it was like a study. So, following in the footsteps and uh, listening to the messages of um, the the artists mainly from the Caribbean, and not just the artists, 
but even the poets and the writings, it all begins from the times of Marcus Garvey when we get that information that we many times have been too privileged to even take serious until, you know, when one grows up and realizes that, man, these guys were the promise, but our generation, we are the fulfillment. Because it will reach, it will reach, you know, because people are just who they are and, and they're that way with everybody. Okay, wonderful. You know, uh, what, what, one of the things that really um, excited me and I found actually funny is when you were doing a song on one of our rhythms. And uh, the name of the rhythm, you, you, said, you said to the Rebel Salute patrons, what did you say? <laughs> Tell me what you said. What did you say? <laughs> that I like, you see, for us, we, like I told you, we, we, when we, we get readings in Africa, they come either on a tape or on a CD, and it's just a whole heap of them, so you can never know which one is which one, but you just see how many artists chanting on it. So when I got that rhythm, I liked it, and when I go to Jamaica, I didn't know what to call it, so I had to have it. <laughs> Right? <laughs> so it was just so funny to hear Bobby Wild on stage. I'm thinking to myself, how does he know that he's not to say? We can actually say it, you know. But in certain you know, in certain polite society, they're kinda of like, ooh. But 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 we can actually don't that's a joke. <laughs> it was very funny. I, 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 can I tell you something? Yeah. It actually brought us even closer. Because it told us that you were, you understand, you did your homework. <laughs> and, and you're one of the people. Is there anything that you want to see, having come to Jamaica again, having got the chance to work on our stage, a big platform yeah. like that? Is there anything that you want to say to, or particularly all Jamaicans listening? Yeah, if there's anything that I could take out from Jamaica, given the opportunity, is the consciousness. The levels of consciousness are so high in Jamaica. I wish the same could be back home. That would answer all the problems. In Jamaica, it seems like everybody knows Wagwan. seems like everybody is, is aware of who they are and where they are in the world. Um, it was my wish to see so much connection between Africa and Jamaica. To me, it would mean like brothers and sisters connecting from afar. There's so much knowledge in the black people in the diaspora that I wish could connect. For example, people um, in Africa think I'm so knowledgeable, but the things I know I did not learn from school. I learned from the great people that with so much effort tried to send back to me home through the music, through the writings, through the poems, through the movies. I wish there was more connection like that. And indeed, I felt bad when I was traveling here to realize that it is uh, designed to make it very hard for a, a person from Africa to reach Jamaica and vice versa. It should be made easy so that we have so much, yeah, so that it's a straight line, so that we have so much interaction between these people. I believe that if we had more of this um, it would make a bigger difference. And indeed, I'm going to take it upon myself to see that there's more connection, that we have more um, Jamaican, especially revolutionary Jamaican music, coming back home to open the eyes and minds of the brothers and sisters back home. I'm very happy to hear you say that. What can I just say to you that you say it seems as though most Jamaicans are, are conscious. That's, it just seems that way. We are up against the very same oppression. We are up against the very same corruption. We are up against a lot of what you are up against. And that is why it is, very, because you see, you, 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 you are in a space where there was consciousness. But that space, unfortunately, is not spread across the island. And there is a movement in the very same thing that you have experienced. There is a movement to, 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 to break down a lot of what has been built up in terms of consciousness and, 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 and all of that. So it is very important, as you said, to create more opportunities for us to, 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 to relate to each other. Because it, 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 that's the only way that it can move from seeming to be to be, to be, you know, your music. 
the people have already fallen in love with you. So all we need now is your music. Send them through Stampede. Stampede, <laughs> collect the music them from Bobby White. Collect artist, them from man. the Africans no, because I know you have a link with the Africans. Link. We, we tend to, to learn a lot, like yourself, as black people, through music. We, in an oral tradition, the same thing happens here. So that music will tell that story perhaps even more than reading about it. So please, I, 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 I ask of you to, 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 to set us up with some music. Yes, you know, it, when I'm playing certain music, it's as though you are arming me. <laughs> there are many ways to be armed, yeah. and that's one way. Um, through the music. And it is such a pleasure to meet you. It is such a pleasure to meet you, and it is a pleasure to meet your wife. It is a pleasure to see the unity between you all, because that is really what it is about. Thank you. I appreciate them so glad to hear that. I'm so happy. Like I said, the first time I came to Jamaica, I said, I must bring my wife here. And what I told her today is that I must bring my children to Jamaica one time, at least. Our family must be the nuclear of what we believe should be spread across Africa. We give thanks and we continue to pray for the brothers and sisters out there. May the Almighty bless you and indeed may the ancestors continue to guide and protect you and open your spiritual eyes and link us up and fulfill the promise. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. This is indeed a blessing. I'm very happy that we could have transmitted it. We could have, so people can actually see, people can actually look back at it. And this is such a blessing. I didn't expect it, but Chai is great. The Most High is great. So I want to say enough respect also to my brother who set this up. You know, I could never ever leave out. Um, my brother, hold on, don't tell me, I don't want you to tell me a name. I don't want nothing like that. I want to make... Dan Diesel! <laughs> my, my brother, Dan Diesel, man. Thank Bless you so him. very much Bless for him. making that connection. And we will continue Stampede. We will continue. Yeah, you know, a lot of artists in Africa right now. Right. right. I'm a little bit more serious. Right. See that? The same stuff. Like I'm, I'm 